So we list out our data, data values, 1, 3, 14. We find our, our sample mean, that's 6. We're just going to go from the inside out of this, expre or this equation, of this formula. It's very much like order of operations. We just start here, work our way out piece by piece, and this table is going to allow us to do that. The first thing we need to do, what do you think the first thing we need to do is? Before we sum, look at the inside of the sum. What's that say? It says, it says sum, right? What's after that? What's after the sum? Take the average and take it away from the x value. Okay, so take the mean, subtract the mean from x. Are you with me on that? That's what this says. This is inside out, right? This is the most inside piece we have. You have to do that first. So what we do here, before you start adding all this stuff up, that doesn't really make sense. We have to find this piece first. This says you're going to add these pieces together. So the first thing is, you're going to make another column. Let me get the pen here. X minus X bar. That's what you're going to put in that column. So can you tell me the first thing that I should have here? Notice how you're not doing 6 minus 1, right? Even though 6 is a bigger number, you're doing x minus x bar. It has to be that way. So we're going to do 1 minus 6. How much are we going to get there? Very good. What's the next one we're going to do? Keep going. How much? Okay, the next one, what are we going to do after that? And we get... I'd like to show you something. Do you all agree that these are the actual distances from the mean? Do you agree on that? This is negative five units away from six. Or five spaces to the left from six. This one's three spaces to the left from six. This one's eight spaces to the right from six. Are you with me on that? Now, if we were to average these, average would mean add them up and divide by the total number, right? But watch what happens. If you were to add these right now, what's negative 5 plus negative 3 plus 8? Yeah. That's because this is the average. If you subtract the distances from the average, you're going to get 0. That, that doesn't make any sense right there, right? Because you know these are away from the mean at some spot, at some point. But if you try to average them, you're going to add them up and they're going to make 0, looking like they're not any far apart. This works because you have an equal number to the left and an equal number to the right of that average. Maybe not an equal number, but the same, the equal amount of value, equal number of spaces to the left and to the right. Are you with me on that? Would you have to be okay with that? All right. That's why we're going to square them. So the next column, it says, you, you take your values, you subtract your mean from every one of them, we have that now, and then you're going to square it. So on the next column, we're going to draw x minus x bar, and we're going to square it. All it says to, for you to do is take that distance that you just calculated and square it. That's going to make everything positive. Because when you square a number, no matter what it is, it becomes positive. So can you tell me what is here? How'd you get that? Okay, and we're negative, but it doesn't really matter because we're doing, taking negative 5 times negative 5. True? Everybody, what's the next term? That wasn't everybody, but I'll take it. Yeah, it was nine. And everybody, what's the next one? So we take each of those distances, we square them. So we're going to recap just a little bit so far. We list out our x's. We find our mean. For the first little part, we take every value minus the mean we listed here. Then we're going to square them all. That makes them all positive. That means when we add them up, we're going to get a positive number. That's great. None of them are going to cancel out and make zero on us, looking like there's no uh, variation. We don't want that to happen. So we square them that they're all positive now. The next thing it says in our formula is, okay, after you square it, what's that mean again? Yeah, so we're going to, down here, we're going to add these up. So this is going to give us the sum of x minus x bar squared. Question? Yeah, um, on your column header, you have x squared instead of x Oh, yeah, you know what? Thank you for that. I was just seeing if you guys were paying attention. Did you buy that? 
Oh, okay. No, that's not true. No, sorry, I meant to write that extra part. Correct your notes if, that, if you had that wrong, also. Okay, so x minus x bar squared. Now we add that whole column, so go ahead and do that on your own. See what you get after you add those pieces. What'd you get? We're almost done. We're trying to fill this formula out. And what we have so far we have this whole numerator. Do you guys see that that's, that's accomplished already? We've done that part of it. This whole numerator happened to be 98. Now, we don't want to forget about the square root. We have this large square root. But inside that square root, we're going to have 98. And on the denominator, what are you going to put on the denominator? Think about it. What's the n mean? What's the n mean? Number, Number items. items. How many items do we have? Three. So we're going to put down here. Two. How are you getting two? Okay, so I'm going to put the 3 minus 1 is so you know where it's coming from. But our n in this case is 3. How we find the n? You just count them. So we have three items. So s equals, that's a standard deviation for a sample, the square root of 98 over 2. Okay, folks, what's 98 over 2? Square root of 49. What's the square root of 49? Nice. Don't forget to take that square root. Now, this is kind of rare. Honestly, standard deviation is most oftentimes a decimal. It's rarely a whole number. In this case, it happens to be a whole number. That's kind of nice for us. So what we got out of here is that the standard deviation is 7. If it's a decimal, do you want us to leave it in with a radical? No. No, we're going to find a decimal to one more decimal place than the data that they give you using the rounding rule. So here, if, if we had whole numbers, you're going to give me the standard deviation as like 2.4 or something like that. It's a good question. But no, we don't leave standard deviation as a square root. I know that's kind of weird because in other math classes, you want exact values, right? You want like, oh, the square root of 2 is, we just leave it the square root of 2. You usually don't put the 1.41. Here, you're going to do that because we're going to use those numbers and calculations later on. That's, and we talk about that in, uh, in other cases. You'll, you'll see that later. We get to something called the z-score, and you'll have to have that down. Okay, how many people feel okay calculating the, the standard deviation using the method we just learned? Would you like to see the other one? Here's how the other one works. Are you sure there's no more questions on this? You see that what we're doing in every case? Subtracting the mean, squaring them, adding them, and then we divide. And finally, at the very end, we take the square root after you've divided. Now our next one, let's go ahead and do this here. We're going to use this formula. Now, our table is going to be a little bit shorter because we don't have to do anything with the mean. We need just three columns. Maybe just two columns. You'd certainly need your x's. Our x's are again 1, 3, 14. Those don't change. The other thing you're going to need is your what? Can you see from the formula what you need? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take each of our x values and we're just going to simply square them. So let's do this together. What's the first one? Geez, I could have done that one. What's the second one? Uh -huh. What's the next one? 196, that's right. You have calculators, so no big deal. Hey, guess what? 
you're ready to plug this in the formula now. That's kind of nice. Not a whole lot of work doing uh, every item minus the mean. That's, this is a little bit better for some people that like this more. So we're going to write out a large square root, and in that we're just going to start filling out information. Now there are a couple of other things that we have to do here, namely what it means to do this and what it means to do this. This one says, what are you going to do first? Are you going to add the x's and then square it, or square the x's and then add it? Sure. Okay, that's this column. All we have to do to find this piece is add these together. Are you with me on that? Maybe I'll get a little bit more room. So here, we're going to get the sum of the x squareds. Has anyone gone through and actually added those already? Two oh six. That's fast. Okay, two oh six. Good. This one. This one's backwards, right? This one said it backwards in this one. This says you're going to add them first, and then you're going to square it. So we also need to add this column together. How much is that? So on our numerator, we're looking for n, we're looking for the sum of our x squareds minus the sum of our x squareds, notice the pause, I'm emphasizing that a little bit differently, all over n times the quantity n minus 1. So there's a couple things we need to know. The first one is n, how much is n? Participate with me, come on, verbalize it. We should all be knowing this stuff. How much is n? Three. Good, all right, so we're going to put 3 down. Can you tell me how much the sum of our x squareds were? Perfect. Then we have a minus sign, no problem. The next thing is the sum of our x squared. What's the sum of our x's? 18. Okay. Just don't forget to square it. So you're going to put 18 here, great, but you're going to square it. You can't forget to do that. That's really important. Otherwise, you're subtracting 18 versus whatever 18 squared is. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. On the denominator, not too bad. We're going to put, what's the first thing? Good. Times how much? Good, yeah. So in this formula, you're going to find you deal with slightly bigger numbers because you're squaring this, that's pretty big. You're multiplying here, that's pretty big. But it doesn't matter because you have calculators, so whatever. <clears throat> how much is the 3 times the 206? And 18 squared was? All over. Down here, we're going to have 3 times 2. Yeah, it's going to give us 6 eventually. Oh, shoot. 618 minus 324, what'd you get out of that? One more time. Can you tell me how much 294 divided by 6 is? Then take a square root, how much are you going to get here? Same thing. You know what, it has to be the same thing. So we get the same standard deviation no matter which formula you use. 